As most of you know that follow what we do here in the Storage View Lab, we currently hold the world record, well, we're tied for the world record right. on the length of the Pi Solve at 100 trillion digits, but we've got the fastest of those we, 100 trillion digits. Yes, we did the speed run the first time just to kind of vet out this system. Found a little things here and there that we thought we could improve, and uh, well, we decided to take things a level up. As is typical, not always approved. Uh, so the first run, we used this uh, QCT server. This was the one we got from yeah. uh, AMD at the launch. Yeah, the Genoa launch, right. 96 cores. Okay. Uh, and when we ran 100 trillion digits in here, we had to get a little creative with the SSDs because this one only supports 16 drives, right? Right, yeah, we had the 30 terabyte Solidime QLC drives in there. Right. And we had them on riser cards in the back. They we were all full in the front. Cards. Yeah, right. it was, it was, it worked. It was kind of elegant. That's not even, no. It was, the best part about it was that we had an iSCSI share to a yes. 36 drive hard drive chassis with mixed hard drives in RAID zero to hold the yeah. output because the output of solving 100 trillion pi is really big. It's about, what, 100? It's 100 terabytes. 100 terabytes. So it's pretty big. And we actually had two versions of the file because we were saving too much anyway. Be that as it may, we did the best we could with the hardware that we had on the time. But what we wanted to do is to see how much more storage we could get into this platform. And for that, we went to our friends at Serial Cables who sent this. This looks like a JBOD, and I guess technically it still is a JBOD, but this one's curious because of what, Jordan? Well, we've got these uh, SFF-style uh, connectors that you would see for SAS, but these actually carry PCI Express, and then each connector actually has two cables that come out of it. So this is pretty sick, and our thinking was, okay, we're drive-limited here, we don't want to use as many or any of the uh, jankiness PCIe adapter sleds, although they work fine. They're somewhat limited. So with this, we're thinking we can get a bunch more SSDs in and then fill them back up with 30s and we can yeah. go crush the 100 trillion record, but... Well, we found out when we were doing the math that we needed about 36 of the 30 terabyte drives in there. Okay. So that's, again, you said we brought in our friends from Serial Cables to get this JBOF. We had the 16 in the QCT server. Right. But we found out that because of the PCI slot bifurcation using the X16 cards for the JBOF with all the flash in there, after we filled about 12 drives in the front of the QCT server, the drives started taking priority on the PCI bus and started knocking off things. Uh, I think the in order the things that went down was there's the USB controller and then the Ethernet controller and then the VGA somehow went out. And we found this because we filled it all up. Kevin and I were really excited and to have all the drives. And they couldn't access the machine. And the, all, nothing was working, but it looked like it was working. And so we worked backwards and started pulling drives and found okay, we're, we do have a, a limit here to the amount of PCI we can add to this bus. Which is really pretty interesting because for as much as I crap on SAS and uh, the, as a technology and, and, and SAS SSDs, and they're relatively insignificant for most modern deployments, right. but SAS expanders and SAS JBODs don't have that problem. Right, that's not something you'd run into in a traditional SAS. It's only because of the amount of PCI lanes that are required to run in VME devices. But it does underscore an important thing, and it's not just in, in this server. As we think about the technology that's required for things like GPU servers that have very few SSDs native on board, yeah. there's a lot of challenge in the industry right now about how you get more fast storage adjacent to, in this case, our CPUs, but in the GPU case, obviously, to the, the, the DDR and those uh, GPUs. And there are, I mean, as we're sitting here aware of currently, yeah. at least half a dozen projects that are trying to address that exact concern. All of those are outside of today's scope, but I bring that up just to say that this is a bigger problem than just what we're dealing with here, and the industry is working hard to solve it. Um, that said, we did end up with how many drives then? We had 36 in total. Okay, and that times 30 is... It's right at about a petabyte. So you have plenty of room, and that let us go for a run of... 105 trillion digits. 105 trillion digits of pi, which is a 5% gain. It doesn't sound like a lot, but <laughs> believe me, it's hard 
we know it's hard. We know that there are other publishers out there trying to knock us off. No one's done it yet. 105 is a great number, and we're totally pumped about it. Yeah, I'm super stoked. It's like the first time a big record like this has been set in some time. Google was the last one to do it with their cloud compute. We did it so much I still faster. I feel like even though we, if we had just gone for one trillion and one, yeah, that's cheap though. That's like, you know, price is right. All five dollars, six dollars. Fine, I'll <laughs> like, take the new Kia, and you can ride the donkey from Deal or No Deal. But that's uh, that's part of the discussion. So when yeah. we went to 105. We thought it was the best we could do with this particular set of hardware. And uh, Jordan, why don't you walk them through some of the the hardware features that you guys were excited about. So on the bottom, we've got our Quanta box. We've got two AMD Bergamo 128 core processors. We do have a SMT disabled on these. These chips in particular in here do have SMT. Don't get them confused with the non-SMT variant. We just did it with the BIOS setting. On top, we've got our serial cables, JBoff, just a bunch of flash. We've got it filled with 24 solid state drives. These are all 30 terabyte. Mm -hmm. QLC. Starting around the back of the JBoff, we can start to see all of the interesting connections. Uh, basically, the way this works is it's a lot of PCI Express bifurcation. So we've got our bottom controller and our top controller. Each controller has four connectors, which carry the PCI Express. Each connector actually carries two, two cables uh, per connector. And you connect these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So following those around back of the server, those actually connect into our PCI Express bifurcation cards. We'll take a look at the second when we get inside, but these are uh, switched PCI Express bifurcation. And what it does is it'll take an X16 slot and give us the 16 ports out the back of the server to connect over to the JBoff. This has implements in there. We haven't actually experimented with it yet but we can uh, daisy chain these and do different redundant routes and multiple routes and things like that. So let's get the uh, JBoff here. Let's get all of our cables disconnected out of the back of the server and we'll take a look at the cards on the inside. All right, so this Quanta platform has the uh, PCI Express risers flipped so they're on either side, which gives us a view of the top and the bottom. You can see the controller chip on here does have a small fan for cooling. On the bottom, we've got some ASICs. Let's get these popped out and get a closer look at them. Oh, let's do the big pie run where nothing can go wrong. What could possibly happen? But let's not screw anything in. Hey, Kevin, hey, no bad ideas. All right, so here's our serial cables, uh, PCI Express adapter. Again, this is an X16 card. It takes those 16, uh, 16 PCI Express lanes off the board, off the riser and put some external. This is what the inside of the connectors look like, uh, very similar to uh, SFF8088. And then we've got some dip switches on here, which is actually how we set the modes. Uh, our mode, we were running it in uh, four by uh, four bifurcation mode, so we had to do up, down, up, and then up, up, up on these on the bottom here. All right, moving back around the front of the server, we can go ahead and lift, we can go ahead and li lift this entire, piece out, carefuling, carefuling, and we can see. <laughs> okay, so these CPUs ran nonstop, like pretty hot for quite a while, and the stickers are still st <laughs> I didn't know if you put, Kevin! Okay, so we can see our uh, storage review slots that Kevin added for speed and power. Uh, got the nice big chunky copper heat pipes going on in here and our one and a half terabytes of Samsung DDR5. These are 64 gigabyte modules, one and a half terabytes of them, 24 total modules in the entire system. So this is kind of an overview of the platform that we used. Past that, we'll get into some of the details here shortly about all the different drives. Pretty interesting stuff inside here. Kevin obviously left those slot stickers in there. I thought he had taken those out. That was kind I of a knew, shock. I knew that they were there because Kevin, when he does things, He's not really into undoing them. Yeah, I mean, I remember doing it with him. I just, for whatever reason, wasn't fully expecting him to be there. And in such good condition. Mint, yeah. as someone said. Sitting in their hot server, our, our stickers are primo. Our stickers are primo. And if you go to store.storagereview.com, you can get yourself a set of those stickers or the bonk magnet that's uh, over here to remind people to stay out of your server room, else risk damage. This comes in a uh, hoodie as well, if you're interested. Commercial end. Yeah, well, we got to pay the electricity bill on this somehow. Yeah, um, about, about that. Yeah, so about that. So we were running uh, about 62 days total with the uh, with the computation. I think in the end, including the stops, we were about 75 days. So speaking of stops, we found some really interesting stuff. This is the, uh, I saw the post 
on the uh, the Y Cruncher blog yeah. about some computational issues <laughs> that, that we were running into so, with our platform, and then he replicated, right? I reached out to Alexander Yi, the developer of Y Cruncher, right. and we were having a conversation about some of the challenges that I was having and that I was seeing. And after kind of some initial skepticism, we got together and he looked at the server himself and watched it perform. And what we ultimately found, long story short, is there was an undiscovered CPU hazard in a certain portion of code that had to do with some allocation stuff. He's got a full write-up. We'll link that in the full uh, detailed blog about this run. But that was the first challenge that we had. I think there was probably about three more that we uncovered along the way. Well, in addition to the port losing uh, keyboard access to the system. <laughs> we did rectify that, but <laughs> during the run, so we discovered that we discovered the hazard, which we weren't able to mitigate in this version of Y-Cruncher. There's a new version coming out shortly, uh, version 8.4, where it'll all be corrected. AMD uh, Zen platform going all the way back to Bulldozer has this hazard, which is now fixed. Um, the next thing that we ran into, we were having some issues with our, uh, our computation. We were getting right up to the end and where then, we should yeah. have been done, and the program would just blindly crash, which is unusual, right? Developers put in air handlers and it says, you know, air seven, you to, know. To be fair, when the program was designed, I don't think that the developer in his wildest imagination expected right. we would be where we are. Right. In so, terms of the size of the runs. Yeah, so there was there was definitely a size constraint to it. I think he had quantified that the debug was became more probable after somewhere like 40 or 60 trillion digits, right. which is very rarely even attempted, much less completed. So um, we were able to help uncover that through some live debugging and actually salvage our run, our 105 trillion digit run, uh, by doing a hot fix on the code, which is actually now public and pub uh, published by Andrew as well. That was, uh, that was two of the big issues. And there were some others. And anytime you do these computational uh, workloads like this, when you're running something for so long, 60 plus days. Full tilt. Full tilt yeah. is an eternity, I, uh, in my mind, for some of these workloads to complete. I mean, even the most modern chat GPT whatever on GPUs don't take that long to right. do some of these training runs or certainly not on the execution of. But you know, it, it does introduce a bunch of new problems. Power stability, if you're in a big data center, is less an issue. You know, for a smaller one, you unplugging uh, the wrong cables behind the rack. You know. Anyway, there's lots of challenges with uh, with these sorts of things, and as fun as much fun as we had with the 105 run, and I really encourage because, as I said, we're well aware that that there are others out there that want to come beat our record. And I fully accept that challenge, Jordan, as on. well. Bring it on. We want to see if anyone can beat our 105 trillion world record Pi computation. But before you start down that path, I would encourage you to shoot for the stars. Because behind me, we're running this Dell R760, and it's got 28 61.44 terabyte solid IM SSDs in it. So you could do some math on the uh, amount of storage that we have in there and figure out what that one's capable of. Single server, cranking out on all of those SSDs. So before, like I said, before you come at us and try to beat the 105, that'll be cute and all. Don't embarrass yourself. Go for a bigger number and see if you can get it done. I bet we'll be having this conversation in uh, another year once these capacities get up another jump or we find a more yeah. dense NVMe server. Well, when those 256s come in, we'll be... Shh. You're not supposed to talk about <laughs> Can't that. Can't talk about those no, yet? that's okay. top secret. Until then, check out the report. That'll be linked to in the description. And thanks for tuning in. See ya.